Good morning, folks. We're starting in 304 angstrom, showing ionized helium in the solar corona. Got an earthquake, weather, top articles, and plasma filaments with eruptive potential there on the left side. So let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Still pretty calm, but that left side, south of the equator, we see a curving dark rope amidst some brighter ionized iron. This is part of the phalanx of ropes incoming from the limb that present eruptive potential as they turn in to face Earth. The active region brightest out ahead of the filaments is silent and calm in magnetism, and we'll be keeping an eye out for anything coming along with those arching fields just north of the equator at the limb. Coronal hole directly facing Earth. We expect its solar wind stream at our planet in 36 to 48 hours, while the seismic alert peaks until then. Whether you have our latest book or our first one, or whether you follow the factors at quakewatch.net, you know that a low pressure cell heading at a fault line can be a reason to pay attention. As it ran on shore, a magnitude 6 earthquake struck the Tibet region, strikes slip, rocks ripped, and dropped bricks in China. Let's also not forget that Ascension Island quake from a week ago was not only nailed by Councillor Gimber, but also Terence Allen. Apologies took a few more days to notice that two of our users got it. And while we discuss the lithosphere, we've got a new caldera in the largest Iceland glacier. Alert levels are on the rise. Top weather event to report was in Australia. These scenes coming out of Melbourne, but in truth we saw harsh effects in New South Wales, Western Australia, and Victoria. Rain lingers across the country today, but hopefully at vastly less intense levels. Very cool animation from Oak Ridge and NASA showing the magnetospheric interaction with the solar wind at the boundary where a CME or coronal hole stream might impact. While the compression occurs directly facing the sun, around the sides we see these plasma tornadoes and portals for charged particles along the edge of that boundary, aiding in the space weather energy delivery to Earth. This is a pretty cool article out about how we can actually accelerate a craft ionically to super high speeds, but we'd have really no way of slowing it down. Unless maybe if we used magnets. They want to accelerate a small probe towards Alpha Centauri and have the star's magnetism act as the braking mechanism. Toronto scientists say increasing cloud cover in Europe is the cause for increases in rickets. And while we love the sun, we know that rickets connection is real. And we know that a weak star will bring more cloud cover due to cosmic rays, all as we expect. My honesty strings want me to favor smartphones, video games, and social media as the major contributor to the lack of sunshine time for the kids. Website members, your weekly Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up in a few hours. We'll predict winter conditions in the north and run down some of this week's top stories in a lot more depth. We've got wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and involvement. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.